Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Glide tutorial. Last time I said that we actually we were done with the code. Uh, that's that's not quite through yet. We have to do two more things. And um, the first thing I'd like to do is just add some kind of arrow around our player so we can know where the next ring is. In case you get lost in the map, in case you get a little bit um, just just out of focus, uh, you need to know where the the actual objective is, so the, the current objective is. So we're adding a small arrow that points towards that objective. We're going to have to find the direction in 3D, that's simple, and then we're going to have to cast it on a 2D object to actually make that look good. Um, so that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do is to actually encrypt our data. Like I said during the save tutorial, the way we're saving right now is not safe enough for us. We'd like to actually just push it a little bit further by encrypting our data, since we're saving to a local machine. But that's going to be for tomorrow's episode. Today we're going to head over to the game scene. And uh, let's find let's find our canvas actually. Right click on it, add a new UI and image. I will be renaming that image for arrow, and I'll also create another one. So create image. That's going to be the arrow background. Now the reason I'm using two object two images is so I can actually create some kind of pivot point. So um, let me quickly take the background, reset everything to zero. So make sure everything is set to like clean. And then I'll take my arrow, put it as a children of the arrow background. On the background, I'll remove the image component, and we'll just have a basically we just have a canvas render on this image, and it has a transform. Now what I'll do is I'll take this arrow, maybe go down to say minus hundred, and it really depends. We're gonna have to um, see exactly how it looks in the game, but right now let's leave it at something like that. So you've got your pivot point, which is gonna be the arrow background over here. And let's actually try to center that on the player. And whenever we're actually rotating the arrow, we are going to be moving like this around the player. So let's take a wild guess right now. Take our arrow background, put it at say minus 200 or minus 150. And let's leave our arrow like that. Right now, I do not have any actual image for the arrow. Um, so I'll use the default one by Unity. I'll go over here under Sprite, click on drop down the arrow and I'll actually just use this one for now. I know it's a bit cheap but until I make some more asset uh, I'll be using this one. If you're actually playing this game or actually if you're starting the tutorial after a certain date you might have this in your artwork folder so just double check on that um, if you can actually put some better graphics. Okay so we have this arrow background right now let's head over to the game scene and inside of the game scene we are going to start calculating that um, direction. So we need a few things. The first one is going to be a public image arrow. Now, if you actually can't get image, make sure you include UnityEngine.UI, and then we'll do a private transform. We're going to be using the player transform, just like this. And what else do we need? We need a public objective. That will just call objective. And now this one is really confusing, and I'll explain to you what we're going to be doing with that. Um, right now actually. So the next thing I'd like you to do is head over to your objective script. So let's go under objective and under here under the start function what we'll be doing is uh, we'll do a find object of type game scene and then find the public property that we just made so the objective like this is equal to this and basically all we do here is set the objective field in the game scene. Now you might be wondering why I'm not doing this the other way around. So why is the game scene not getting its own reference of the objective? And if we just step back in the game scene for a moment, you're going to see that we do a private void start and here we pretty much just assign all our field. We do find object of type here that works fine. Now we can't do objective is equal to find object of type uh, objective simply because it does not exist yet. As part of the game scene, we do not have an objective yet. The objective comes from the scene manager load scene and then we load whatever scene it is. However, this function takes two frames to execute. So um, during the start, you're not going to get the objective just yet. You have to wait another frame to have the scene loaded up. And then at that point, um, well, our start is already gone here. So what we could do is just uh, create some kind of function here that would only ha um, happen during the second frame. But the, the, the way I actually decide to do it 
is simply whenever the objective is ready, it's gonna set itself in the game scene. So that's what we have here. Now the reason I want to have the objective as a reference in the game scene is so I can actually know where is my current objective. So where is my current ring? The one I need to go through right now. And now what I could do is turn this into a public field, turn this list into a public field as well, and just access it using ring, uh, ring pass, but that'll be a little bit too annoying to do. Uh, and I don't really want to have these fields here public. So what I'll do instead is just create a public transform get current ring and then in here we'll simply do a return oh. we return rings at ring pass dot transform because we want a transform out of this actually this is already a list of transforms so you don't need to do that okay so the only reason I have the objective script is uh, simply so I can call this function so let's head back inside of the game. Now at this point, we should have an objective, right? Well, it's not sure just yet because the update might run during the first frame. So let's just do a security check right here. If objective is not equal to null, so if we do not, actually, if we do have a objective, let's run this code. So if we have an objective, and now this is where we actually um, rotate the arrow. So rotate the arrow. How do we go about doing this? We start by doing a vector three direction is equal to player transform inverse transform point. Now really important to use the inverse transform point and not the inverse transform direction because that's that's not gonna work. Um, and then the position you want to, to be looking at is the get current ring dot position. And this is where our objective comes in handy. Now just after that we'll need the angle, so float A is equal to mat F. Atan 2 there dot x there dot z times matf rad 2 degree okay now this code took a little bit of googling on my part but uh, I'm just sharing with you the the final result I've got here also had to increase it by 180 degrees and finally arrow to transform local Euler angle is equal to a new vector 3 0 0 and a and actually this is going to take a little bit of um, of change here because the arrow I'm using is the one default in Unity so it's the drop down arrow it's actually pointing downwards so I'll need to flip that by putting a 180 over here and just like this we end up having our whole mechanic let's head over to the game scene and drag and drop our arrow background we're going to be using the arrow background actually and not the other one around um, which means that I've made a mistake right here because for the arrow background it needs uh, a image but we don't really want to be using the image we can just be using the rec transform or even better than that just a transform itself so let's actually try this out I've just swapped my image to a transform and we're gonna be drag and dropping the arrow background let's see if that works let me go back in the preloader I've got the game playing on my remote as well and let's see if that works. So right now it's pointing downward. We have a no reference exception. So let's go see why. So player transform. Okay, so player transform isn't set, which does make a little bit of sense. I forgot to set it in the start. So in the start here, let's find the player transform. By doing a player transform is equal to find object of type and the only, um, the only object that has the player motor class on it is the player so we can use this to find him so find object of type player motor transform let's try this once more and here I am on my remote again I'll be moving with this and as you can tell it does work just fine and um, the way we gauged it doesn't look too bad the arrow is around our player we might want to increase the distance in between the arrow and um, and the player itself, but as you can tell, it does point in the right direction. We just crossed this one, so it's pointing backward now. And here we go. So now we have a clear indicator of where to go to proceed and win. And let me try to actually get this one. 
Okay, nice, amazing, so I've done it. Um, yeah, like I said, we might want to increase the distance in between these two, so I'll go back into my canvas, arrow background, let's put like a 150 on this. And eventually, once we have like better um, assets, we can change that to a very cool looking image. But yeah, that was a really short episode, guys, but thank you so much for watching, it was a much needed feature because I, I kept getting lost in my map since I don't have any content just yet. Uh, but now, there's no way for me to get lost with this. So again, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed or if you learned something. And uh, yeah, click on the video to go see the encryption tutorial, which we are going to be doing tomorrow. So guys, cheers.